I run a small design studio in New York. We used to do design for the music industry exclusively. Over the years, that has gotten boring. Mostly because from a designer standpoint, you're dealing with three clients on every job. The band, management, and the label. And obviously, as probably everybody in this room knows, these entities have different goals. So it's very easy from a, as a designer to find yourself as the little play ball in between those entities. So I took a client-free year, which I'm now doing every seven years, actually. I'm in the middle of one of those client-free years right now. Uh, I'm in Indonesia at the moment, doing just experiments. But on the, after the first client-free year, I reorganized the studio into those four things. Mostly because I started the studio to do design for music, which were my two loves of my life. And after seven years, that's changed. The, I wasn't that interested in music anymore as I got older, or it, didn't, it played a lesser role in my life, and I wanted what we do reflect that. So, well, I put this one, I had no interest in corporate design, but uh, I thought somebody will have to pay for everything, so I put that in uh, as a quarter. A big campaign, this is massive in the United States, a group that wants to reduce the military budget by 15% and spend the proceeds on education. This is big money, this we are talking 15% of the military budget is 65 billion US dollars. Uh, these are some of the things, military spending, US, Russia, China, axis of evil. We did TV commercials. This is Mostaf showing off our pen. This is what we spend on children's health. This is what we spend on education. This is what we spend on war, that big, tall, red one. I think we got better things to fight for. Get active. Visit TrueMajority.org. Send the facts to Congress because the pen is mightier. We did a well, we tried a whole lot of things out. Uh, lots of it didn't work. <laughs> and strangely, this did. Uh, we spent $75,000 to have these picks made. It's the same amount of money that you pay for a single page in the New York Times, which we did too, but worked much less. We had volunteers drive these picks all over the States. They were on local TV news almost on a daily basis, and through their form, they forced the anchor man or the anchor woman to actually explain what this is all about. So you have the Pentagon budget, the education budget, and the foreign aid budget. And we had them on the news for years. Uh, volunteers driving them had a shitload of fun. We demonstrated with these cookies how money is spent in front of malls. Uh, this took me five years to talk them into it. Uh, <laughs> handles beautifully. Uh, it's an inch and a half lower that it just still goes through highway overpasses. And you see here, that's the logo of the organization, which is the way the United States, before Obama, spent its money. Everything that's red is military, everything else is everything else. We got a number of jobs, two in the very beginning, that came with an incredible amount of freedom. The first one was a magazine, and they said, we have 12 pages in the magazine, do something. I could have, I don't know, peed on a sheet of paper, and they would have printed it. And I considered it for a while. Uh, I considered, and it turned out to be unbelievably difficult. I didn't know that I was so naive. I didn't know that working without restrictions will be 
just a nightmare. Because, of course, as a designer, I always work with industry, uh, uh, constrictions and briefs and so on. And then I did come across this list in my diary that I had quickly jotted down within 20 minutes just as a little guide. What do I actually know? At that time, I was 40 years old. I'm 46 now. Uh, what do I actually know so far? And when I came across that list, I thought, oh, you know what? Considering that I wrote that list down when it was in my diary where I hope I don't lie to myself, so I believe these things to be true, I'll just pick one and we'll make these 12 magazine pages out of it. I pick this one. So these are the first spread. Everything I do always comes back to me. Almost immediately after that, uh, the city of Paris called and said, we have billboards in groups of five to do something. That was easy then, because I just went down the list, uh, trying to look good limits my life. The meaning of this is that not necessarily how I physically look, even though I think that concentrating on that can be very limiting as well, but mostly there's my fear of confrontation, of not going the hard way, of, trying to, of, of having to be the nice guy, that that can be very limiting. So we had two. And that was two was already a little, a little start of a series. So I thought, maybe I can talk my existing clients into letting us publish these sentences on their pieces. And there was a, a, the School of Visual Arts, which is the the, well, probably the best and for sure the biggest art school in New York, wanted us to do a campaign that they always run quite massively in the subway system. And they gave me a sentence. The sentence was something like, I forgot what it was, but it was something like, come and study at the School of the Visual Arts and your life will be better. Uh, I thought that was a fairly dubious premise but uh, didn't speak up in the meeting and actually accepted that as the brief. And then only when I started working on it, I thought that this is actually not even true. Like, I do not think that studying art will make your life better. But then I thought, I cannot really just get rid of it and put my own sentence up there. But then I saw another sentence underneath that said, assuming is stifling, that I shouldn't, shouldn't assume that that wouldn't be possible. Did it anyway. Thinking life will be better in the future is stupid. I have to live now. And they liked it. And then the Scottish government put on a festival called the Six City Festival. And they wanted us to create a sentence that somehow would create media attention for design and their festival. Their brief was, you can do whatever, as long as you use a sentence, and as long as that sentence has six words, so that you would, can put one, one word into every one of our six cities. So this is Sterling, everybody, Aberdeen, always, uh, Edinburgh, thinks, Glasgow, they, Dundee, are, and Aberdeen, right. So everybody always thinks they are right. It worked, both for the client. We had, they were on the cover of many Scottish newspapers, even on the very high quality ones. <laughs> they also massively traveled. You see them, this was just in, this is California. This is New York. This is Miami. And best of all, well, they're in Louisville, Kentucky right now, but it looks like that it, this fall they're going to go on top of the Israel Museum in Jerusalem, where, of course, with this sentence, everybody always thinks they are right. They are going to make a wonderful target practice. Uh, this is a projection. Uh, and the projection can actually see the viewer and react to the viewer. So you have the spider web, and if you walk by the projection, you can't help but ripping the spider web. And considering that the spider web is unbelievably, the reaction is very immediate, you as the viewer uh, know what's going on, you realize what's going on, and likely you're coming back. And as 
soon as you're out of the projection area, it rebuilds itself very much like a spider would rebuild itself. Would rebuild a, a spider then. The hardware for this is very much off the shelf. It's a regular iMac, a little $50 camera, and a projector very similar to the projector that we're using here uh, uh, today. The software, however, is much, much, much more complex. It's been written by a friend of mine, Ralph Amir, in, in Berlin, uh, from scratch. He programmed the type that you see here in green as being interactive, as well as all the radial lines from the spider web itself. You see how gravity now plays a big role, which of course makes it uh, swing so naturally. And as soon as the information that is provided by the hidden movie camera comes in, it's turned into a much more contrasty image. And then he programs a force field around that contrast. And wherever that force field hits the formerly green lines, like the type uh, or the, the radial lines, you get the, you get the interaction. I have learned a good number of these other things. Uh, I'm not a big warrior anymore. I got, to a large extent, worry out of my life. But on this one, I have to talk myself into it. I think I get a little bit better. But I still have to talk myself overcoming fear about something on a constant basis. And I do think that, I mean, fear clearly is a very necessary emotion that uh, evolution designed so that we wouldn't jump of trees into the mouth of tigers. But considering what safe lives we all lead, you know, in cities or even in, you know, quite controlled countries, my guess is that our fear kicks in much, much, much too fast than what would be necessary to keep us safe. And I think that we, for sure, from, I can't really, uh, you know, talk for you guys, you as well might be unbelievably fearless and uh, do crazy things on a constant basis. But for, for myself, I know that I could, on a, on a daily basis, go quite a bit beyond uh, what I readily uh, perceive as, ah, I shouldn't do it. So these are again magazine pages. This is having it's the same thing. You see it here from the side. You see it here from front. Having guts always works out for with the light on me. Thank you so very much.